Hello! Welcome to the Knit Song Podcast. My name is Audrey and this is my podcast where I share what I'm knitting, crocheting, sewing, yarn that I'm dyeing, etc. Basically where I share any crafty things that I'm up to. So welcome! This is episode 37 and I am coming to you from Utah on a beautiful July day in 2020 and I have some fun things to share today. Um, first, I am sorry it's been a while since I podcasted, podcasted, podcast, I don't know the, po the past tense of that word. Um, I had a technical problem with my camera and recording system that I just was able to figure out. So in May, I was really consistent with getting episodes up and then stopped. So I'm back, I figured out what the problem was. So I'm happy to be podcasting again, it feels good. And the benefit of having been a little bit longer in between episodes is I do have some new things to show. So I think I will jump right into what I've been working on and then I have some fun, um, I have a finished object, I have some works in progress with knitting. I don't think I have crocheting today, but I might be wrong about that. <laughs> and then a little bit of sewing and then I have some books and fun like TV recommendations, like things that we've been watching in our house. So anyway, welcome. Hope you are doing well and having a good beginning to the month of July. Um, I think I will start with my one finished object. So I finished my vanilla socks. So just a plain old sock that I knit and I used my City Lights in a Homespun House yarn, um, which was my birthday present from my mom. Um, it's such a pretty, pretty color. And I have a good amount left. I have a skein up there, and I think I'm gonna cast on a shawl with this and another, uh, a different contrasting color. Anyway, more to come on that. But I finished my socks um, with a Homespun House City Lights and Dragon Horde yarn in her Patronus colorway. And I just did 56 stitches. I have pretty small feet and I find that 56 stitches fits me pretty well. Um, I did two by two ribbing for about 15 rounds. I have found that I kind of like about a 40 row um, leg. And then my typical heel is a heel flapping gusset and then I knit to the time when it was ready to do the toe, and bada bing, bada boom, got some socks. So yeah, I really like these, love the color. I will confess, I made, I mean, we all make mistakes, and I don't know what I was thinking, but when I, when I was working on the second toe, I don't know how, but I got way off, and instead of doing the decrease and then two rounds, decrease two rounds, and then going to decrease one round, decrease one round. Somehow, I went straight to decrease one round, decrease one round. And so this toe is a lot sharper and pointier than this toe. And it was actually worse than it's showing right now. It was about twice as pointy. <laughs> and I actually had to rip it out and try and even it out so that they were kind of the same shape. I got them pretty close. But that is what happens when you don't knit your socks uh, quickly and at the same time. I took a long break between the first sock and the second sock. And uh, um, yeah, I forgot the method for this toe. I did a totally different one on this toe. So that did slow me down a little bit, but it's okay. And once they're on, you can't tell the difference. So. It's no big deal. But yeah, finished pair of socks. Love them, can't wait to wear them. So happy with them. So that's finished object. I was gonna say finished object number one, but I think that's my only finished object. But let's get to some interesting whips. I'm super excited to show you all the whips that I'm working on. Um, I think first I'm gonna go in this order. And in my little scrappy bag that I made sometime in April, 
I've got a brand new cast on. I don't think I had even cast this on my last episode. Clearly I don't watch my own podcast because I don't think I remember. Um, maybe I had swatched, that's what I had done. I had swatched for this, pro, uh, this project and I hadn't cast it on yet, but it is the Sea Glass Racerback by uh, Meg of Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. And I don't have a picture, but I do have my work in progress. So I did cast this on, and it's a really cute summer racerback tank top. Um, well, you don't have to just wear it in the summer, of course, but um, yes, super in progress. I have not woven in the ends, but I've got the back started and the front straps and then the first few rounds of the body. So I have been enjoying this. The construction that she uses is super fun the way that I don't even remember where you start, but it was just really fun seeing this top of the tank top come together and it knit up really fast. Um, so that was fun. If you're looking for a garment project to knit and something that'll make you feel like you made a lot of progress really fast, I suggest this because it truly flies at the beginning and you're like, oh, I've done the whole upper body part. And now that I'm to the body, for a while, it's just knitting in the round, which is fabulous for movies and times when my brain is just not up to reading a pattern. So I am knitting this um, in Dragon Horde yarn in the, it's one of her Moana colorways, How Far I'll Go colorway. And you can see how fun that colorway is. It's so pink and all peachy and beachy and just very summery to me. Oops, it's blowing out a little bit. So yes, I'm hoping to wear this this summer. So I'm hoping, it's like July 2nd, I think. And I, if I keep going, I could have this done by August and have a whole month and a half of nice warm weather to wear it. So I think I shall. Yeah, and then I'm going to, I only have one skein left. I used about, a little less than half a skein to get this far. Just started the second one. And like I said, last podcast, my plan is um, the Patronus colorway that I have some left of from that sock I just mentioned. I'm gonna use for the bottom of whatever. However much is left when I run out, I will just switch over to that color because originally I purchased these two colors together, the Patronus and the How Far I'll Go. Um, so they look great together and that will be the plan. So hopefully I'll be wearing this next, po next podcast. Maybe, hmm? I don't know. Uh, yeah. So work in progress. Number one. I really, really, really like this pattern, by the way. It's super easy to understand. And like I said, you feel like you're making so much progress at the beginning because it's so small, the sections that you're knitting. So that's a lot of fun. Um, let's put that over there. And let me see. Work in progress number two is also a design by Meg of Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits and, or Bad Wolf Girl, Bad Wolf Girl Studios. Um, I'm not sure which name she designs under. I'll put it in the description box below. But yeah, Bad Wolf, Bad Wolf Girl. She's awesome. Um, and... I am knitting, I'm doing a test knit um, for her um, right now, which is so much fun. It's fabulous. I've posted my progress so far on Instagram for this sweater. It's her Astraeus sweater. Boy, I am totally fumbling over my words today. It's her Astraeus sweater and it's a gorgeous design. She has shown on her podcast, I think the past two podcasts that she's done, she's shown her gorgeous, gorgeous um, dark blue and gold sweater. It's just, it's really striking. And so as soon as she posted that she was looking for testers, I responded and I was like, I'd love to do this. So I'm so excited to be test knitting it. And 
I have some progress to show. Um, oh, and the bag, that's for the sewing section. That's another finished object for sewing. But anyway, let's start with the Astraeus sweater. It's a very striking design with like moons and stars and it's just gorgeous. And hers, I like I mentioned, it's dark blue and like this beautiful gold. And so originally I wanted to knit something like the same color. And I probably will knit another one in that color uh, wheelhouse because, excuse me, I had the hiccups I think. I might need to take a break. Um, but uh, hers is so, so beautiful. And I definitely love the look of the blue and the gold. Uh, so pretty. So I wanted to originally do that, but then I was thinking um, for test knitting, I thought maybe it would be fun to have something different. So as all the different testers are doing different color combinations. And so I thought maybe it would be fun if I did something different just so that she'd have even more variety to show on her, uh, on the examples for her um, pattern page. So when you um, go to purchase the pattern, you can see all the different color examples. Um, so personally, when I purchase a pattern and I'm on Ravelry and I look, I love being able to look at people's examples of different color options. So anyway, that led me to come up with my own kind of different color scheme. And what I came up with was something that I couldn't find online to buy. Um, and so I haven't dyed yarn for, oh, maybe a year. And so I thought, you know what? I think I'm gonna buy some bear yarn, get all my stuff out for yarn dyeing and try and dye a sweater's quantity. And then I was like, this is a great idea. This will be so much fun. And then panic set in because I hadn't dyed yarn in a year. And so I was thinking, oh no, well, what if I've made this investment and I don't like what I dye, I'm gonna have to buy yarn anyway and then I'll be behind with the group. Anyway, long story short, it worked out really well and I like what I dyed. Let me show you what my um, color inspiration was. Um, I wanted to do something somewhat literal because it's a, a pattern of stars and the moon and, and it's, you know, sky themed. Um, or star themed and so I really wanted to do something somewhat literal but I wanted to do something different than the other examples that were being done in the test group so I found I had seen online these beautiful photographs of the night sky with um, a view of like the Milky Way and just times when the sky looks like it's a dark purplish gray and the stars almost look peach so here is the inspiration for what I dyed and you can see it's kind of a purpley peachy night sky and here is what I came up with so and I hope the color will show up the light is not fabulous today but here is what I have so far and I'm really loving it. I'm really enjoying it. It's such a fun pattern to knit. The chart is so much fun. I am having a blast. And I, I think this pattern releases on September 1st. I so recommend it. It's really fun. It's squishy. I can't wait to wear it. And it's beautiful. It's entertaining to knit. I'm a real fan. So let me show you where I am so far. And I will show you, I think I have a picture of the finished, her finished sweater in here that I've printed, but you can kind of see there are some stars and then there's some moons and then there's gonna be more stars below. And I would, it's looking like it's gonna fit perfectly, but I can't stretch it because my needles are not that long and I don't want to lose a stitch. <gasps> Did I? No, okay. <laughs> You know that feeling. <laughs> um, yeah, so Astraeus is the name of the pattern. It's worked uh, in DK weight and it is just so much fun. So here's what I have so far. I'm loving it very much. So 
yeah. Um, if I show you a little closer, you can see that it's kind of a purpley grayish black as the main color and a really light peach as the contrasting color. So here's what they look like in this game together. I was most nervous about trying to dye. For my size, I'm right on the edge of needing, I think, three skeins of DK and four. So I dyed four to be safe, but I was so nervous about getting four matching skeins. And I got it. I will actually show you. This was easy because it was just the one co contrasting color. <laughs> so as long as it was in the right family, it was, it was fine with me. But here is second skein, which I might as well put in my bag because I'm almost ready for that. And the other two. So, yay! They came out pretty well. I'm really happy with the color because it's kind of neutral, but it's got just a little bit of a purple undertone to it. So, oh, it was nerve-wracking, not going to lie. I was so nervous dyeing a sweater's quantity for myself after I hadn't dyed any yarn for a year. <laughs> it was bold, but it worked out well. So, phew. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Astraeus is the name of the sweater. It is by Megan Regan of Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. I think I said that before, but it's just fun as can be. Let me show you a picture of what hers looks like, the finished product looks like. And she is so lovely. Here we go. There it is. Gorgeous. So I cannot wait to get to this section. Um, so, 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 so fun. Okay. That is my main work in progress right now. That is the main thing I'm working on. I'm going to put this over here for a minute because... I think this is gonna be my segue into sewing works in progress. Actually, I think I only have sewing finished objects. Look at that, who knew? Okay, got my sweater out because my first finished object for sewing is this new project bag. I mentioned last podcast, I believe, that I had gotten this beautiful Pride and Prejudice um, themed fabric. It's The line is by Riley Blake and it's um, Pemberley is the line, which is the name of Mr. Darcy's mansion, of course. And you can see, I think this is Pemberley. This is the biggest house on the print. So then, of course, I mentioned, I think this is Netherfield Park. And then there's like the church and other houses, smaller houses. Maybe that's Longbourn. Anyway, I probably said all the same things when I was gushing over this fabric last time. And then it comes with, um, there's just a bunch of different colors. So I chose three. The line has like, I think 15 or so different Pemberley related fabrics. I chose these three where I wanted the, the main fabric for the line, which is the houses and like the, the view of England, um, like the background, the setting. And then there's like this one called Lizzie's Garden, the pink, which is washing out just a little bit in this kind of bad lighting I have down here. I did a drawstring bag. And then, I love this fabric so much. The inside has all the people dancing at the ball. So you can see them all lined up and the officers and the ladies, the pretty dresses and the chandeliers. And then I did a pocket with the contrasting fabric. And I really enjoyed sewing this. Um, I haven't done many drawstring bags. I will say first, what I did is, oh, I followed the Squishy Drawstring Bag Tutorial by Erica Arndt on YouTube. I'll put that in the description box below. Really, I love her t tutorials, they're really easy to follow. And then I chose a pink ribbon for the drawstring and it wasn't hefty enough to hold up to the weight. So then I took some more of this green fabric, the main fabric, and I made um, just one inch, 
I actually don't remember. I think it was maybe one and a half inch, so it ended up being like three quarters of an inch or so. I made a strap basically um, because it just was not, the ribbon was not cutting it. It couldn't even really close this really well. So yeah, and then I used a cotton batting, which I enjoyed so much more than the poly plasticky whatever uh, batting I used for this bag. Um, I enjoyed the cotton batting so much more. Um, yeah, I didn't do a lot of quilting, I just did top stitching, but because of the top stitch here, as well as here and the seaming, it's not like puckering because I didn't do much quilting, like it's staying pretty cohesive. But yeah, that's where I'm keeping my Estrella sweater and I love it. I love this bag and I love this fabric. So yeah, especially how fun is that? You open it up and all the people are dancing inside. <laughs> kind of fun. Uh, yeah, so that's sewing whip number one. Let's see if I can get my sweater back in here without losing a stitch. And my pattern, yes, I did it. Okay, and then it looks even cuter actually when you have something in it to hold it together. Yay. Okay, and we'll put her right back there. Um, similarly themed, my other sewing <laughs> finished object is I made a matching, <laughs> uh, a matching notions pouch for myself. My, I mentioned on Instagram the other day that my notions pouch has seen better days. It's old and it's been with me for a, over a decade. <laughs> so it was time. So I sewed this one using another Erica Arndt tutorial. Uh, I think it was her easy zipper pouch tutorial um, and put a zipper in it did some contrasting fabric again I didn't do any quilting but I did do um, just a line of top stitching where the fabrics meet and of course have to have the people dancing inside I used the same fabric for the lining so you can see you got my scissors and tape measure and darning needle and all that good stuff in there. So this was really fun. I just had a great time sewing that up the other day and it's such a small and quick project. It was really fun. So I think that's most of the crafty content in this uh, episode that I have. Oh, excuse me. I forgot a work in progress. Pardon me. Let me back up the truck a bit. I've got a new pair of socks. I just joined, um, I cast these on yesterday on July 1st. Um, so I'm a month late, but I'm joining Summer Sock Camp with Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. I'm joining the DPN cabin and now I have enough knit on my sock to actually post a picture of it today. So I will join the group today. Um, and ta-da. I am working on a brand new pair of socks on DPNs. And this yarn, I don't know the name of this. This was, I think Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarn. Um, I can't remember, I think it was, I honestly don't know, remember the name of it. I think she gave it to me when we were at like a knit night swap, I don't remember. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's Dragon Horde Yarn. <laughs> um, and I'm using that for the cuff. And I did about 15 rounds, cause I'm gonna do shorter, not quite shorty socks, but shorter socks. And I wanted enough cuff to really hold on to my ankle. And then I've just started the body, which I am knitting out of my Telegraph Avenue colorway that I dyed a few years ago. And I'm having fun with it. So, yay, new pair of socks. So this is just a day old, and so we'll see how much progress I can make and if I can knock these out quickly. I'm going to attempt um, an afterthought heel with these, I think. If I can keep my guts, uh, keep my, <laughs> um, my courage, and if I have the guts to do it, 
by the time I get to the, the heel, I think I'm going to go for it. Um, because as part of the summer sock camp that Kay is doing uh, from the Crazy Sock Lady, she put out a afterthought heel tutorial that is really great and I've always wanted to try it. Um, but I think I'm gonna do it with these, so we'll see if I have the guts when I get there. But yeah, um, I think now that's all the creative crafting content. Um, I did wanna share a couple different books and things that I've been enjoying um, and a little bit of scrapbooking. I've mentioned that I do that sometimes. So I'll just talk about the scrapbooking real quick with the world kind of still um, in the middle of this whole thing uh, and staying home a lot more. I've had some extra time on my hands and I've mentioned before that organizing family photos is something that I want to make sure while I'm at home and I have the chance to do it, um, I think it's a good thing to do. So I have started to document our family history. Well, it's kind of already like documented. My family has always, well, I have an aunt who wrote down a lot of our family history on my dad's side. And then I have um, things that we had written from my mom's side. Basically when I was like in, I think sixth grade, I got really into family history. And so I remember, I, I still have it in my sixth grader handwriting, all the questions that I asked my grandma and my grandpa about their families. So I've started my first page. Basically, I'm trying to lay out a structure for myself. Long story short, I'm giving a full spread to each relative that I can find pictures of because there's probably more than a page worth, but at least everybody, every person kind of has a page. So, this is for my grandfather's history, and it's really fun just to see, I don't know, there's a glare, but it's really beautiful just to look at family, his report cards, his wedding picture, I think that was, um, it's just really fun to see things like that. And then this is on my grandmother's side, on my dad's side. Got great great grandmother, my great grandmother, um, their farm. This is a favorite of mine. This is my great grandmother with her sheep. So fun. And her little lamb. So, yeah, I'm gonna try and write in some of the journaling and make sure I have my names and dates right. Uh, because of course I know the names of my grandparents, <laughs> but the names and, and my grand, my great grandparents, I know their, their names too, but, uh, with great, great grandparents, I'm double checking cause I never obviously met them. And, uh, yeah, it's been fun to like, just talk with family and try and get my facts together so I could put that down. And those are the only two pages that I've done so far, but I have so many pictures <laughs> And it's been really fun just to kind of start putting that together. So when I'm not in the mood to be knitting or sewing, that has been my creative go-to. Um, books. I've also been enjoying a couple different things. And I actually match one of them today. Ah. But I've been having a little bit more time to, or trying to take some more time too, to play piano. And if you... You can see the Jane Austen theme developing for this episode. <laughs> but um, if you're interested, if you play piano or someone in your family plays piano and you like Jane Austen movies, this book is a ton of fun. It's um, for piano, Jane Austen's world, and it basically has um, the themes for the different, a lot of different um a lot of different Jane Austen inspired movies. So it has um, the theme from the 1995 Pride and Prejudice. It has like three different songs from the Sense and Sensibility with Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet, which I love that movie. Um, so it's got, you know, a good amount of 
those songs. It has, I think, two or three from each one of the movies. Oh, and Emma, the Gwyneth Paltrow version. Um, oh, wait, and I think I mentioned last episode that we had just seen the 2020 version of Emma, and it's so good. So, anyway, this is really fun, and I've been enjoying playing some of the, the, the movie music um, from Jane Austen movies. And then... This one is gorgeous, and my mom just sent it to me. Um, oh my word! So my mom's my mom, for my mom's birthday, my aunt bought her this book and sent it to her, and my mom loved it so much that she's so kind. She sent me one. She's like, "You have to have one of these. They're just so beautiful." And so I don't know if you. I've never heard. I had never heard of Ruth Cho Simons before. But she's like my favorite now, <laughs> and I've only known about her for like three days, or maybe a week. But she did this book called Beholding and Becoming, um, and it's basically, uh, she's a painter, and she wrote, um, she has like Bible verses in here, and then she has painted around them, and just gorgeous artwork. And she's written like little devotionals and things alongside of it too about just um, like the art of everyday worship and talking about just appreciating um, life and different things. And if you're interested at all, I highly recommend her. Um, so gorgeous. Ah, oh, let me show you a couple pages. So yeah, just beautiful. I mean, oh my goodness, I just want to keep looking at these. But, um, oh, like, so even, even just in between the pages, there's just this gorgeous artwork. There's a pretty full page one. And she has, at the beginning, she even talks about kind of doing an Art Nouveau William Morris kind of inspiration style. Um, and it's just beautiful, super, super gorgeous work. Oh, I love it. I told my mom, it's going to be so hard for me not to cut out and frame <laughs> each one. And I think I will. I'm going to, after I read it, I'm going to have to frame some of these. She just does beautiful work. And the theme of it is what, uh, we become what we behold. And so it's about paying attention to, um, where our focus is and the things that we watch it's such a true concept the things that we behold we tend to become more like so if um, yeah so that's just kind of a good thing to think about but yeah gorgeous book so love it I'll put the um, title and stuff in the whoops and there goes Jane um, uh, in the description box below and let's see, I think that was pretty much all that I had. I've really been enjoying this book, playing from this book. Um, I've been continuing to bullet journal, which has been tons of fun. I am still following Amanda Rach Lee and look at the July theme of hers that I've copied. <laughs> um, I love recreating her themes and following along with her group. Um, but it's a picnic theme for the month, which is so fun. And then got like your habit tracker and um, just thoughts for the month, creative planning. Anyway, and then I don't think I podcast at all in June. And so I can show you June was really fun with her. It was a 1950s diner theme, which is so fun. And yeah, that was really great. The mood, the mood tracker was also super fun last month because it was a, um, like a hotel sign from the fifties, kind of like a motor, motor in. But anyway, yeah. So that's been fun. That's another creative ish thing I've been doing. Um, but yeah, I want to also mention as far as, uh, 
you know, sometimes at the end of the podcast, I'll share things that I've been watching that I think are interesting and I would want to recommend. And I totally have something great to recommend. If you are into documentaries at all, um, my husband and I have been watching the Ken Burns um, series on the Roosevelt family. And it is so entertaining. If you like history, you'd love it. It goes through, and it's, I think, eight episodes. Um, and it goes through, it starts with, like, Teddy Roosevelt's branch of the family, and it also talks about FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's branch of the family, how they interacted with each other, different views that they had, and um, it goes through Teddy Roosevelt's presidency, and then it goes through the in-between time, and then it goes through... Um, Franklin's presidency and it and it, of course you know so you go from like 1900 to 19 what 45 it, I mean and I think it goes even a little bit further past but um, it's just so good so if you're interested in that uh, it used to be on Netflix and now it's not so we missed the chance to watch it on Netflix so we actually purchased it so worth the money really well done so that's my current thing that we're looking forward to watching. We are on the last episode right now, so I can't wait to finish it. <laughs> um, but that's good. Yeah, it's so interesting. Just the crazy times they went through and... Oh my word, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. And it's just really, it's not just about them. You really feel like he does such a good job of using other people's experiences and photographs so you don't feel like you just got to know the Roosevelt family well like you feel like you really understood what different Americans were going through um, at different times throughout both of their presidencies and just the challenges that the world faced the challenges that our country faced the challenges that they faced um, yeah really interesting stuff so yeah anyway I would recommend it if you're interested in history or anything like that. Um, yeah, what else have we been watching? We've been kind of hooked on that. And it's eight really long episodes. So I think each one is like a mini film. I think each one's like an hour and a half. So it's a long ride, but it's fun. Um, yeah, so 4th of July is coming up a couple days from now. We don't have any big plans. Might go to the park. Um, might uh, get a chance to play some badminton, maybe some tennis, something outdoorsy. Um, we'll see. But yeah, anyway, I really hope you're having a, a good beginning of a new month and hope you're having a good day. Hope you get to do some creative things today. And thanks for listening to what I've been up to and thanks for hanging out. I'll put my contact information down uh, below in the description box. And I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.